Oh, hello. This is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak, and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, recently, I did a video on how to cook chicken drumstick in boiling water. Uh, there are many ways uh, to cook chicken drumsticks, uh, including roasting, baking, and grilling. However, cooking them in boiling water is probably the simplest method. In this case, I boil some water uh, in my Cusina 14-inch stainless steel wok, and then I put the chicken drumstick in the wok. I turn the heat to low. I put a cover over the wok, and then I slow cook the chicken for about 30 to 35 minutes, and the chicken is done when its internal temperature reach 170 degree Fahrenheit. Uh, and then I plunge the chicken drumstick into ice cold water. Uh, this turned out to be an important step uh, because it will keep the meat of the chicken moist and tender. I save the broth of the chicken drumstick uh, and use it to make a chicken porridge. Uh, this is what I would like to show you in this video. The chicken porridge that I'm going to make uh, is a rice porridge. A rice porridge is very popular uh, in China, particularly in the southern part of China. And when I was growing up in Hong Kong, uh, my family have rice porridge every day. I quite often have rice porridge for breakfast. And my father always had a bowl of rice porridge at the end of a meal. Uh, he said that it helped his digestion. Uh, the type of rice porridge that I'm going to make in this video is usually used as a breakfast. It is cooked in a chicken broth, and quite often uh, it also contains chicken meat. Uh, sometimes it might also have other food ingredients, such as shiitake mushrooms. In this video, I would like to demonstrate to you the economical advantage of that uh, drumstick package. I have already used the meat from the drumstick to make a ginger scallion chicken dish. And now I'm going to show you how I'm going to use the chicken broth to make this chicken porridge. And then I'm going to add to the porridge some shredded chicken. And when I was growing up, before commercialized baby food became popular, many families will mince the chicken and add it to the chicken porridge. Uh, this is a very popular baby food. I have a particular penchant uh, for chicken porridge. Uh, this is probably because I received this as a baby food uh, when I was young. I left about 12 cups of the chicken broth in the wok, uh, and then uh, add about 1 cup of cooked rice uh, to the wok. Uh, this is just about the right amount, uh, because the rice will expand after they have been cooked. Uh, I then use my hamburger meat masher uh, to break up the rice. The amount of rice uh, added will determine the consistency of the porridge. Uh, less rice will create a thinner porridge, whereas more rice will create a thicker porridge. As you will see later in this video, I want to create a thin porridge. I put on the cover and then I set the burner uh, to its lowest setting. I'm going to slow cook the rice with a low simmer. Uh, this will take about an uh, hour and a half to cook. Uh, the benefit of this cooking approach is that I do not have to stand there and uh, oversee it. I will come every 15 to 20 minutes uh, to give it a gentle stir. Uh, using this method, the porridge will always turn out great uh, without being burned. I check up on it about 20 minutes later. At this point, the rice is only lightly cooked. But so far so good, everything looks great. I definitely need to cook this a little bit longer. So I put the cover back on, I set the timer for 20 minutes uh, to come back to check it again. Uh, 20 minutes later, I came back and take a look to see how it is going. Uh, as you can see here, uh, definitely there's a difference uh, to the rice. 
One thing I have learned over the years is that you can fully control the texture of the rice depending on how long you want to cook them. This will give the porridge a different texture and provide you with a different culinary experience. And in this case, the rice grain remained relatively intact. For example, my father preferred this texture. And he said he would like to be able to chew on the rice grain while he ate the porridge. Whereas my mother is quite different, as she preferred the rice grain to cook more. So when she ate them, she liked to feel that everything was blended together. I was more like my mother. I would like the rice grain cooked a little bit more and blended together a little bit more thoroughly. So I'm going to put the cover back on and uh, set the timer for another 20 minutes. Okay, my timer went off, so I'm back here uh, to take another look. So as you can see here, uh, the rice grains uh, have broken up quite a bit more. At this stage, the rice definitely has broken up far more than how my father would like it. But if you ask my mother, she probably would say she would like to have it cook a little bit more. Again, I tend to agree with her, so I'm going to set a timer for another 20 minutes. At this time, when I open the lid, I noticed that uh, on the surface of rice, there are some foaming. Uh, this indicated that uh, the rice had been simmered a little bit more than before. And without any question, uh, the rice has broken up quite a bit more. Uh, in fact, at this point, it is hard to distinguish the individual kernel of the rice. And if my mother was standing right next to me, I could hear her saying that this is exactly how I would like it. In fact, this is a consistency that would be appropriate for baby food as well. And we could make this even a little bit thicker by cooking them a little bit longer to evaporate some of the fluid. The porridge now has reached the consistency that I'm looking for. So the final step in the cooking this porridge is for me to add the chicken to the porridge. Uh, this is the chicken meat that I cut off from the drumstick. I want the chicken meat to taste tender and moist uh, when I eat the porridge. Uh, therefore, it is important for me to add them toward the end. Uh, since the chicken meat uh, has already been cooked, so what I'm doing is just mixing them in. Uh, when to add a particular ingredient to the porridge uh, depends on how those ingredients uh, need to be cooked. Anything that I can cook with the porridge to give the porridge flavor, I will add those ingredients uh, in the beginning when I start cooking the porridge. For example, one of the common ingredients that add to a chicken porridge uh, is shiitake mushroom. Uh, since shiitake mushroom can impart flavor to the porridge, uh, I will add them early during the cooking process. Uh, however, it will be very different if I'm going to add fresh mushroom, such as white mushroom or portobello mushroom. Uh, in those cases, I will add the mushroom toward the end in cooking the porridge. Uh, this type of mushrooms could be easily overcooked, and if I want to maintain their texture and flavor, I need to add them later. Okay, now this porridge is done. I'm going to use them for breakfast. I'm going to store them in the refrigerator uh, in serving portion. Uh, this porridge has long shelf life. I normally could store them in the refrigerator for up to 7 days. And I can also freeze them if I wanted to. Uh, this video provides a basic template on how to make a basic porridge. Uh, you can use other type of meat such as beef, like ground beef, pork, uh, to substitute the chicken. Uh, you can also substitute the chicken with shrimp and fish. Uh, so there are many possibilities. And for seasoning, 
I'm going to add some basic seasoning mix to the porridge. And this seasoning mix will give the porridge a rich umami flavor. And of course, you can season the porridge any way that you prefer. And with a few quick mixes, the porridge is done. I post a video each day uh, to help you to make home cooking uh, practical, efficient, creative and fun uh, using my fast cooking system. If you'd like to learn more about my fast cooking system, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So keep on cooking. I will see you tomorrow.